Hi, and welcome back to Classic MGB. Now, MGBs have been used by the UK police since the 1930s, and both marked and unmarked MGBs were used extensively in the 1960s. However, the Roadster was pretty impractical for police use, with modest performance, limited space for the necessary equipment, and the obvious difficulties in transporting prisoners. In fact, it's reported that if an officer made an arrest, they had to call for backup in the form of a saloon car, rather than take the prisoner in the MGB. This didn't always happen though, and reportedly one prisoner actually requested the officer to drive past his mates, so they could see him in a smart MGB sports car. There's a lovely anecdote about police MGBs, best told by one of the female police officers that was involved, Hazel Lane. When the MGB was introduced, the men didn't like driving it. It was too much of a, a puzzle to get in and out of. It was quite low on the ground uh, and uh, not particularly comfortable. But one of the MGB drivers decided to set up a challenge to see how many police officers he could get into his MGB. This was fun, um, but it was the only sort of thing you could only do in the middle of the night because it wasn't really normal practice. <laughs> so we had this plan. Um, we were all going to meet at 2 a.m., um, as many MGBs as were actually on the road that night. And the plan went well. It was a quiet night. Nobody was being called to any jobs anywhere. And I think we had six or seven MGBs. And then we packed in as many police officers as we could into each MG. I don't know what the, the, the winner was. I've got an idea. It might have been 17 or 18 bodies. When the MGB GT was launched in 1965, it was recognised that its hatchback design and increased cabin space due to the raised windscreen made the car much more suited to police work. However, towards the end of the 60s, the performance of the Roadster and the GT was becoming somewhat outdated and many were replaced with MGC GTs, which, although more powerful, suffered with poorer handling and the model was eventually withdrawn in 1969. The car got a new lease of life though when the MGB GT V8 was announced in 1973. British Leyland felt these could be used as ideal traffic vehicles with the 3.5 litre V8 engine weighing little more than the standard 1800cc unit but offering significantly improved performance. Now it's not clear how many genuine police MGB GT V8s are still around but we managed to track one down at Former Glory, a classic MG dealer just outside Oxford in England. So we couldn't resist popping down to take a look. So here we are, a genuine police MGB. And to tell me all about it, Nigel Gill from Former Glory. Hi, Nigel. Hi. So tell me a bit about this car. So this is a factory V8, but it's actually a pre-production model. It was sent by British Leyland Fleet Sales um, to selected police forces around the country for um, operational evaluation. So this was one of the original trial ones that went to the police? Yeah, and it's being on LREG. Most of them are on MREGs, of course, so it's kind of early yeah. 73. Sure, so, so and that they, based on this, they decided to use MGBs in the force? Yeah, they, they ran it around, and um, there's actually a police review article in August 73. They actually assumed that um, this car is very difficult to fault. Um, it goes, stops and handles very well in the wet or dry. In fact, it's so perfect for police work, it could have been designed especially for the job. So there you go, off the production line, and it was really up because, and running. Because you think it's, it's not a very big car. If you look at the squad cars of these days, the BMWs and the Volvos and things, yeah, it's quite a yeah. small car, isn't it? True, true. But um, it just had the effortless power and cruising ability and they could sneak up behind you and... Uh, and and this are. quite obviously is, is marked. What, what, other, what other changes did, did, did they have to do to the car before um, it went into service? They had a Westminster Bell at the front there, which is pretty loud, actually. Sure. And I might demonstrate that later. Absolutely. And yeah. uh, have the flashing lights, etc. And full walkie-talkie inside. Um, and I think they had a high-ratio axle just for motorway work. Um, okay. Early days of motorway, of course. Yeah. But, but the, the, the GT actually is, is quite practical in terms of the space in the back. It's exactly, more practical yeah. than a roadster, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. They had to have all their radio gear, etc., in the back and all the uh, police equipment. So, uh, yeah, it was much better in a, in a GT than a roadster. But it's not just the car you've got, Nigel. You've got other memorabilia relating to its police use. What, what sort of stuff have you got? Um, we've got the original Pi radio box, um, lots of magazine articles from the time when it was released. Um, got uh, a lot of police uniforms, 
cones, uh, breathalyzers, handcuffs, the whole lot really. So, but that was all collected by the previous owner who wanted to make it as genuine as possible. Um, and then it, when he restored it, he got the signage restored as well. So okay. and everything working, so it was great. Million dollar question, mm. is it for sale? Uh, been tempted, I've had it about three years now. Um, it's one of those things, uh, it's very difficult to drive anywhere because you've got to cover the signage up because really it's for display only. But um, I did take it to Silverstone for the parade lap a couple of months ago. And uh, yeah, it was great, it was a very hot day, but um, everyone loved it when I blasted the horn going around Silverstone and uh, had the flashing light going, no one knew what it was. So it was quite good. And if you had to value it? Um, it wouldn't be much more than a really good factory V8, I think, in my mind. It's, it's, I'd say it's impossible unless you had a real collector who really wanted it, but, um, but they'd probably just put it into a collection and not use it. So, um, so maybe you know, a good factory V8, 30,000 or so, a really top one. So yeah, yeah okay. so possibly in that ballpark. Should we have a look under the bonnet? Indeed, yeah. Lovely. So Nigel, yeah. take us through the engine bay. Um, well, actually very much to the original spec. We've got the original air box filters here um, with the lobster pans, as they call them, yeah. nicknamed. Um, we've got tubular manifolds on the exhaust instead of the cast iron, because they tend to get cracked over the years. Um, electronic ignition, but basically that's the factory V8 layout. Yeah, but, I mean, for a car that's had, must have had quite a hard life with the police, it's, it, it looks absolutely mint. Yeah. That doesn't appear to be a, well, no rust on it. It probably wasn't used, you know, that long, and it's sure. unknown as to where it went in, you know, after it was used. Sure. But, um, and the last owner did a full body restoration, so right. that's why okay. it's looking it so good now. Restored. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's right. not, some, some originality here, but generally it would have had a proper yeah, body off it restoration. Certainly, it certainly looks looks genuine, doesn't it? It's just no, that's right. It's not like it's got the, any modifications on the carburetors or anything. So uh, it's yeah, looking good, really yeah. good still. Yeah. Okay, interior next. Yeah. So Nigel, tell me about the interior of the car. Uh, well, basically, we've got the original dashboard and seating, um, but obviously the addition of the radios and the switch gear for all the lighting above. So, so it's pretty much standard in there. Yes, they haven't modified the dash at all, and the original steering wheel, um, headlining, sun visors, um, usual glove box situation, and um, original navy velour seats. Apart from that, the last owner's added a modern radio, which obviously wasn't there before, and there's an extra speaker down here, probably for the police radio. Excellent. So what switch gear is in there? Take, take us through the switch gear. Uh, we've got one for the uh, Westminster horn, which is very loud. <laughs> And then we move on to the police stop sign as you're overtaken, followed by the famous blue flashing light. So there you go, a genuine MGB GT V8 police car, complete with handcuffs. Now, we obtained a lot of information for this video from Andrea Green's excellent book, MGs on Patrol, that documents the use of all MGs by the police. If you'd like a copy, it would be great if you could use the Amazon affiliate link in the description. It costs you no extra and we earn a few pennies that help us produce our videos. For the record, I did buy a copy of the book at full price. As always, if you enjoyed this video, a like is much appreciated and it would be great if you could subscribe to the channel and click on the bell to be notified when we upload new content. Many thanks for watching and take care.